Okay, I'm ready. Good morning. Today I'm going to review the last two announcements, one about the final exam and the previous one, in case anyone missed it, about the oral presentation. Then there are three things on my plan, but the most important is the first one, so in case I need more time for it, I can drop one or two things from the rest of my plan. The first thing is, as promised for a long time, to talk about the final exam, to give you a sense of <coughs> what the questions will be, how the exam is structured, a little bit of how to prepare for it. The other two things on my plan would be to complete my presentation of the interface of Wikipedia, insofar it gives us a sense of their culture, the mission of the platform, some of the details of what takes place in the background of Wikipedia. And the last thing would be to introduce the first in a short series of alternative apps, knowledge-based apps, that, uh, and, and I posted some names on the website, probably I won't be able to review all of them. Today's app would be Workflowy. If not, I will present the, the app next week. As you can see here, I received confirmation about the location of the final exam, which, as I expected, is this very classroom, grade 313. The exam will take place on Monday, May 16th, at, starting at 8.30 a.m. Try to be on time. The time slot assigned to us as a class meeting at this time is between 8 and 10.45. So there might be another class coming in after 10.45. If you come in five minutes late, 10 minutes late, I can give you back those time those minutes at the very end of the class, but there is a limit to my flexibility. We cannot interfere with other exams. Before I talk about the exam, let me review in case you weren't here on Wednesday. I posted this announcement and then there are links inside the syllabus now and the calendar page. For the oral presentation, you have several options. You can present in presence in front of me in my office if you rather do it the traditional way. You can schedule a virtual presentation still in front of me, but on Zoom, that would be the recommended way. To do so, you click on this link or you go to calendly.com slash Andrea Fedi, just one word. And from there, let me show you one more time. You would pick oral presentations for both of my classes. And you will see a series of 10 days when I'm available for those presentations between May 2nd and May 13th. And for any of those days, when you click, you will find a series of available time slots of 20 minutes, which is enough for your presentation, which should last between 10 and 15 minutes, and for my brief feedback about that, or for a brief conversation, once you click on any of these time slots, you'll be asked to confirm at which point all you need to do is provide your first and last name, your Stony Brook email. The other two boxes are completely optional. In case you need to add something for me or provide a link, you can use this box. In case you want to receive text messages with reminders, you can put your phone number, but you don't have to, right? And then you press schedule event, at which point the presentation will automatically enter my agenda will appear on my agenda. No one else, of course, will be able to reserve that time. You will receive an email that confirms the details, the time, the day, and also, as I suggested, archive that email, don't delete it, because in case you need to cancel and reschedule from that email, you can do so by pressing on a link 
in case you delete the message, no problem. Just go ahead and reserve another time slot and then send me an email specifying which of the two options you have reserved you want to keep, okay? And I'll make sure to remove the other to make the time available. A number of students have already reserved their times and I suggest that you do so as well if you change your mind, if later on you decide that instead you want to record a video and share the link to the video after you upload it on the cloud, that's fine. At any time, you can cancel or cancel and reschedule, okay? And of course, let me know if you have any questions about the presentation in case you weren't here Wednesday on Wednesday, we also engaged in a short discussion about this and I provided some suggestions about the presentation and I believe there has been, there has been at least another class and therefore another YouTube video where you can find some information. Let's talk about the final exam. You will find five essay questions in the final exam and I'm asking you to respond to any four of those questions, okay? Five questions, four of which need to be answered. It's up to you to decide which four. I'm going to tell you what the focus will be for each of the five questions. Of course, uh, the, 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 the focus will be rather large at this point. Later on next week or the last week, I will provide a shorter list of readings, but it will still include a lot of the readings. I will just exclude some of them. But the basic structure of the exam is very simple. We have three textbooks and we've done, in class, we've discussed some topics and we've devoted a lot of time to talking about and demonstrating apps. The exam will reflect the focal points for our work. Therefore, each of the three textbooks will have one question. You will find one question focusing on the chapters that were assigned from the book, What is the Social History of Knowledge? And again, in the lectures and reading page, you find all of those uh, readings, right? you find all of the assignments which you can review. And as I said, before the end of the semester, I'll exclude a few of them, right? But again, it's not like you find a short reading list with five or six items only. Forget it, okay? So one of the questions will focus on what is the history of knowledge. One of the questions will focus on the second textbook, a social <laughs> history of the media. And one of the questions will focus on one of the chapters from Wikipedia at 20 that you find listed in your list of assignments. As far as the other two questions, I said five questions, four of which your choice uh, must be answered. The other two questions will be focusing as follows. One will focus on other topics that I introduced in class and that are not connected to the textbooks, such as, the, the list in this case is rather short, such as, for example, the comparison between the analysis of the French encyclopedia and its comparison with Wikipedia, right? We uh, had a series of lectures at this point on that topic. Another relevant topic that I introduced was the concept of what an epistemic engine is. And you can go back to the beginning of the semester and re-examine the notes that were posted, review the videos about those lectures in case you missed any or in case you find that your notes on those topics are not sufficiently clear or are not comprehensive enough. So, 
three questions, one each per textbook. One question about topics that I introduced with or without readings. In the case of the French Encyclopedia, I added, I just did this week, a reading which is the excerpts from the entry of called Encyclopedia from the French Encyclopedia. And then you have the presentations that I use in class and the notes that you uh, may have taken during my lectures on that. Finally, the fifth question will have to do with the apps that were introduced. Of course, the question on the apps will not be a technical question, will not be a specific question. We'll still be focusing on the concepts around knowledge and knowledge management that we've discussed and how they're handled by wiki-like uh, apps such as those that we discussed. So the question will be philosophical, right? And it's up to you to bring in some technical examples, some technical details, either based on what you've seen, what you've learned during the demonstrations, or what you've seen and learned from your experience of using one or more of those apps for the digital assignments during the semester and also for the final project. Okay, so five questions, three on the textbooks, and some of the assigned readings will be excluded soon. I'll provide a shorter list so you can focus on some of those. But again, I'll just exclude a few. One, one would be on topics on which we spent some time in class outside of the textbook topics, such as epistemic engine, engines and the French encyclopedia and how it compares to Wikipedia. And the last one about the apps and how knowledge is knowledge related content is managed in those apps or to what extent those apps can be a good match for the profile of a wiki and you can find um, some notes about what is a wiki that was discussed also at the beginning of the semester. Before I get any questions, I want to show you one of the questions uh, that I used the last time the course is off was offered, although keep in mind that the circumstances were different. We were under COVID, it was 2020, and therefore, in that case, the exam had to be offered online, although it was synchronous, meaning all students engaged in the exam. In this case, we go back to a traditional format. You come to the classroom, you can only bring your glasses, your pencils and pens, tissues, right? Not to cry, just in case you, you need to sneeze and you don't want to contaminate anyone. And I will provide the questions. I will provide either the blue books or pages with lines where you can write down your answers. You cannot use the books. You cannot use your notes. You cannot use your computer, okay? So keep in mind that the question that I'm going to show was a slightly better match for the format of, of that class, but still you, you get a, a good enough idea of what I'm talking. Okay, let me, forgot to open Google Drive, that's where I have the exam. So let me do it now.
and let me find the exam and then I'll put it on the screen. <coughs> Okay, so again, keep in mind that the online format of the exam that you have in front of you when it was offered in 2020 allowed for a different handling of the information. For example, you find in here links to material because it was like an open book <coughs> kind of exam. That won't be the case for you, okay? However, this gives you an idea of the broader formulation of the question and the fact that each question will contain a variety of prompts. That is to say, the questions will not ask you, give me exactly this kind of content, but rather discuss these topics and these are some of the angles that allow you to talk about the topic. So let's review question one, which is at epistemic engines. Explain briefly what an epistemic engine is. Again, there is a page that I posted and there are one or two lectures when I talk about this, I believe there were two. And demonstrate your understanding of the epistemic engine definition by comparing various aspects of that definition to the distinctive qualities and functions of a typical wiki. There is another reading about that, well, one of my pages about that. What kind of structural components and embedded features enable a wiki to have a multiplying or potentiated effect beyond the user's natural or acquired abilities on the collection, the analysis, and the efficient handling of knowledge, especially new knowledge? And then, further <laughs> suggestions are included. Feel free to include references to one or more of the digital tools introduced during the semester which in that case was in this order, DocuWiki, Evernote, Notion, I've reversed the order since. Let me show you another example. And again, keep in mind that this as well contains link that you wouldn't have in any other equivalent format. So, the topic for question five is Wikipedia and the French Encyclopedia of 1750. And it goes, consider the famous manifesto entitled What Wikipedia Is Not, written by one of the founders, Jimmy Wales, and the entry for encyclopedia published inside the French Encyclopedia of 1750. Use specific foundational principles or issues debated in those documents to do a selective comparative analysis of the manifestos of Wikipedia and of the French Encyclopedia of 1750. Discuss similarities as well as differences. Feel free to include passages. Of course, this was applicable to the format of that exam, which allowed the student to have in front of them those documents. If a question such as this were to be proposed to you, you would have to rely on your knowledge of the themes or topics of that, of, of those readings, and then you would entertain a more general discussions of the themes. You wouldn't have to include specific details or specific passages, right? But you, was, you can still conduct a discussion on that. Sure. Yes, please. Um, will you be like providing paragraph or no, or just the questions? For the, I'm sorry. For what? the for the finals, will you providing for the read from the readings? Um, would you like provide the paragraph or no? I might include in the question a passage, but in general, you will not find readings accompanying the packet for the exam. Oh. Right. Depending on the formulation of the question, I might myself include some points and I tend to write longer questions because these are essay questions and 
because I want to use the questions as prompts. And also I want to use the questions to review briefly some of the topics that you may be discussing. And again, notice that this question does not require the student to discuss one specific aspect rather than another of these two documents. So it's up to this. And, and the idea is that there is no one perfect response for this because you may decide to discuss different issues, different subtopics from different angles as long as what you introduce in your response to this is specific, not generic, not superficial, you will get a good grade for the full uh, score, the, the, the full amount of points for this specific question, okay? But again, questions will tend to be longer to offer you some of the topics, give you some general directions, but then it's up to you to take one direction rather than another based on within this kind of general topic. Because again, both readings referred to here include a lot of issues, right? From neutrality to sourcing to bo both platforms being open-ended, accessibility of information, making the information accessible in terms of style, how you structure an entry. There are a whole lot of topics. You don't have to provide a comprehensive response. Stay away from that. Because if you try to say too much, the idea is that you respond to each question with at least 300 words, between 300 and 600 words. You don't have to count the words. You, just, you can just see how many words in your handwriting fit into one line and count the line, right? I would be doing that myself if I, if, if I don't think the question is long enough, not counting the single word. But if you're kind of OCD, feel free to count every single word. Um, as I said, don't try to include too much. Don't make your response a catalog of short talking points, of short points of analysis. Try to limit your treatment to the most relevant material that you know, that you've learned, that you can uh, include in here, okay? And as long as you show me that you can appropriately discuss relevant material, you will have the points. The, the, the goal for me is not to test your ability to memorize the readings or the material, but rather your ability to argue about, to discuss a topic based on some references to the material that make your discussion specific enough. Okay, again, you don't have the documents in front of you, so you're not expected to include quotes or uh, to make those references overly specific, but in terms of the general discussion, there is a clear difference from short comments on the topic and a, a longer um, argument about relevant points for a question such as this, okay? So that was my introduction. And now you have the floor for any questions. Of course, this is not the only time when we can discuss the exam. As I said, I will present a shorter list of readings next week or at the beginning of the last week. And you can both ask me about the exam at the beginning of each class from now on before I engage with the planned lecture or you can come to my office, come to my virtual office, schedule a meeting if you want to discuss some of your concerns in reference to the exam. But now is as good a time as any to start with some questions. 
please um, go ahead. So are you gonna um, provide us like before the exam like list of reading that we can review? Right, but again, don't expect that short list to be much shorter than the list of assigned reading. So it will serve the purpose of excluding some of the readings. Okay. Don't expect most of the readings to be excluded. Most of the readings will be included, but there are things clearly that uh, were not given uh, a great deal of time or attention. And so I'll try to stay close to the contents of what was offered in class. Okay. Thank one you. way or the other. That's why I will exclude some chapters. Okay? What else? Okay, so that's all for now. But again, I will ask you again next week if there are any questions. I will also during the next two weeks, be asking you regularly about your projects, your presentations, not just the exam. In case you have any questions, we can open a discussion at the beginning of a class, which would be a good reason not to be late. Okay. The second point on my program for today was to continue and complete this review of screenshot that I produce by going systematically through initially the toolbar on top of Wikipedia after I logged in as a registered user and during this part of the presentation going through the links that you find on the left sidebar which are not heavily used however they provide some interesting insight and they kind of compensate for the initial impression that knowledge within Wikipedia is loosely organized, and that the organization is somewhat chaotic or entropic. There is, in fact, in the background, an effort to direct the work of the Wikipedians. Not to let crowdsourcing take the lead in this operation, but provide some tools to direct the attention of the Wikipedia editors of those 130,000, which at any point in time during the last 30 days are active uh, towards potential issues, areas that need revision, correction or expansion. So that's why through the path that we followed, we find for the second time that we get to the description of a tree of knowledge, which is a model that has been tried, adapted, introduced with different areas, different values in mind but that has been the driving force, or if you will, the epistemic engine in this case, for the organization of the material, and therefore to facilitate the access to the material. The idea that you need to provide the user some kind of hierarchy, some sense of the priority and relevance of the topics they are dealing with, even though most users will instead traverse the pages of Wikipedia driven by need and curiosity. Because after all, the product, as in the case of Google, the product for Wikipedia is knowledge, but what drives the enterprise of this platform is clicks. So you want the users to click as much as possible. And going back to the issue of entropy, that's why both Google and Wikipedia tend to be entropic. Because if Google provided you with the perfect answer within just one click, then their volume, uh, the, the volume that drives their business would uh, suffer, right? Because this is what they sell. In this case, there is no 
business, right? It's a foundation. However, they ask for donations, right? And, and there is a correlation between number of clicks and uh, compliance with the request to donate to Wikipedia, okay? So this is what we find in the background that gives us an idea that there is an organization, that there is a structure. For example, the existence of glossary, bibliographies, of different categories that works as reference, right? Reference pages. And these are more examples of content that is placed to the attention of the Wikipedia community. For example, the top 5,000 pages, which is dynamically updated, right? So it changes every week. And also the feature content, because Wikipedia tries to work almost like a newspaper or a magazine, lifting content they can bring to the attention of both the community of editors and the community of users. In Jimmy Wells' manifesto, what Wikipedia is not, Wikipedia is defined as something that is not about the news, that entries should not be about the news, that the purpose of Wikipedia is not to provide news articles, yet if you look at the sidebar and if you click, if you go to the main page, you find that the news are being pushed a lot. And this is part of a trend that tried to balance the apparent decline in uh, number of users, number of visitors, number of contributors and editors from 2015 on. So in the portal, in various sections, you do find that Wikipedia, contrary to the statements in the manifesto, is engaged in covering the news a lot. And you have this, even this specific portal about current events, right? But this is not something that is developing successfully with Wikipedia. It's part of an ongoing effort to branch out into the news media business, but it's, it's mostly a, a failed attempt. And you find in here uh, different ways that Wikipedia is trying to mix presentation of events from the news, current events, with their database, right? So every piece of uh, news that you find here includes links to the encyclopedia, right? And I've provided many examples. Of course, these examples were from 2020. So a lot of talking about the pandemic, about COVID-19, etc. as you might expect. Also about the elections, right? And you see that in terms of an organization in this case, they're using the relying on chronology, for example. So they have the main events by year, by month, that you can access from the portal for current event. And as usual, you know how by hovering the mouse, the cursor, on any of those links, you can have a brief summary with an image, and then you can decide whether you want to read more and therefore click. Right? Current events are also brought to the attention of the users through this way, right? Through the notice board. This is something that people who want to contribute to this kind of entries can rely on. So they want to encourage people to get into this. 
and they try also to have a bulletin called the signpost although it didn't get a lot of clicks it remained a niche operation within Wikipedia compared to the number of clicks the rest of the platform gets after that they created a separate platform called WT Social that still exists they invested a lot of uh, money they created a separate office they uh, opened the headquarters for WT uh, Wiki Tribune in London and their idea in here was to have a hybrid kind of platform using both professional journalists and some contributions from the users. Contributions from the users would be of uh, a, a, a double nature. Users could provide leads or suggestions of what should be relevant and also users in their minds could be providing funds for investigative reports right in case of articles that require prolonged research and investigation the users could say i care about this issue i would like someone to investigate this and therefore i'll donate some money to uh, promote this kind of news report as i said it is still there as a registered user of this platform as well i receive uh, a newsletter every friday but clearly this is not going anywhere in terms of number of active users in terms of readership this has not had the level of success enjoyed by wikipedia in general still going through the sidebar you find a link to a random article which is like i feel lucky the i feel like feeling lucky button in uh, on google this was when i clicked this was the article of the day the next link on the sidebar after random article is about wikipedia and there you see an emphasis on presenting the leading principles of wikipedia the pillars of the culture of the platform and from there you get into you go into the direction of uh, the concept that wikipedia is a community but it's a movement not just a community it's a movement because it's supposed to be a community of people who want to implement change right through this platform so of course you can access this where you find the definition of wikipedia which is subject to change like any other article right you can find the five pillars of wikipedia that we've seen a number of times you can find stats about usership and about content from there then you can also go to the foundation that runs wikipedia and they explain what they are and from there they uh, ask also for a donation you can see the various enterprises that the foundation is engaged in of course wikipedia is the most important the second most important would be wiktionary followed but as a distant third by texts wiki books and wiki source right but they have many other things some of these things are uh, ancillary too they're just there to support wikipedia for example wikimedia wikidata those are repositories of images and media files that are then incorporated into wikipedia and there you have it spelled out in this brief page wikimedia movement right we are a movement we want to uh, change the world right the wikimedia movement is the totality of people activities and values 
which revolve around Wikimedia sites and projects. Wikipedia being here considered under the umbrella, right? There you have it here under in this constellation of uh, operations by the Wikimedia Foundation, a collection of values shared by individuals, freedom of speech, knowledge for everyone, access to information, community sharing, etc. And of course, you can from the sidebar also access the portal for the community and you can see their effort to make this a real community, right? Not just with the help desk or the reference desk, but with a tea house, which would be like a water cooler kind of uh, shooting the breeze forum, the dispute resolution, and a lot of other sections that are more or less technical about their policy documents, the, t the technical documents, etc. Wikipedia is still a wiki. So like any wiki worthy of that name, they include, it doesn't matter how big a site this is, they still include recent changes. This would be more realistic as a tool for a smaller wiki whereby users and contributors can see what changed. In this case, of course, you have 6.5 million articles, so it is not uh, so relevant, but you can see the recent changes and you can implement some filters, including, this is interesting, whether you want to see changes made by both, both bots and humans, or just humans, don't forget that there are uh, a good number of bots active in Wikipedia. Actually, I checked, and from the last time, the number of bots has gone down to just a few hundreds. At some point, it was thousands of bots working on Wikipedia. These are the changes, the, recent, the most recent changes as of November 4th, just to give you an example. And of course, one can expand and click and go there and see those changes. When you're on a page, you can also see backlinks. Backlinks means what are the pages that link to this particular page? And we've used as an example, the page on actor Sean Connery, which had recently died in 2020. Backlinks are essential to the good work, good working condition of a wiki. And those are pages that link to Sean Connery And you can see the beginning of the list, right? You can, you can understand some of the entries why there would be including a link to the page on Sean Connery. Related changes is this specific version of recent changes. So this would be changes to pages that are connected one way or the other with the page that we are examining, in this case, the page on actor Sean Connery. And you can see some examples in here, as you can expect, related changes have to do with pages about other actors, about a production company, etc. Right. The next element on the sidebar is the special pages. And special pages, again, are not often frequented by the user, but it gives you a sense of how Wikipedia works and how Wikipedia is not just free crowdsourcing, free flowing contributions, but they're, they're trying to channel the efforts of Wikipedians in some directions. So right away, the special pages include pages that need help, broken redirects that end dormant pages, etc. And let's give a look at those pages, right? You have orphan pages, etc. So broken redirects would be pages, links that direct you to another link, but you don't get anywhere, right? 
if you uh, click on this particular article, you're supposed to be taken to another page, but that page is red because it was not created. So this is one way of saying, please contributors take care of this instead of waiting for someone uh, to catch the problem. Dead end pages are interesting because it gives you a sense that what we were saying is true, that links are essential to the platform of Wikipedia. Dead end pages are pages that you reach and don't take you anywhere else. Pages that don't include a link. So that's the end of the road. But again, clicks are important. Clicks are the currency of this platform. So they don't want to have a page that is a dead end from which you can stop uh, reading from Wikipedia. They want to keep you uh, clicking, right? So they want users to provide so dormant pages are pages that were not revised and in the, in the same way that the uh, intellectuals who created the French Encyclopedia of 1750 mm -hmm. wanted their material to be constantly updated and revised even Wikipedia is saying how can the information on these pages not be subject to any review? In this case, we were in 2020, and this was a list of pages that have not been updated since 2011. So either these pages are not notable anymore and should be deleted. If they're notable, if they're relevant, they should be expanded or revised. So it's an invitation to Wikipedians to look at those pages and see what kind of work can be done. Double redirects are loops whereby you're redirected to a page that redirects you to another page instead of providing a, a one link to your final destination, right? The, the redirects are necessary to avoid the ambiguity, right? When there are articles that can have different headings, but all those multiple possible headings should be directing you to the main page linked errors uh, borrows the language of programmers to say these are small mistakes in the coding that should be eliminated some bots usually identify those issues and then the attention of the community is directed to fixing those programming issues Long pages uh, is, is a list of the longest pages that possibly could be made shorter, right? And you can see some of them. Of course, it was 2020, so we had the list of Joe Biden 2020 presidential campaign endorsements based on the manifesto. This page should not be there, right? To be consistent with what you find in the manifesto, what Wikipedia is not, that page should not be and orphan pages still has to do with links there are pages that may contain links will contain links however at the same time no other page is linking to this page so if there are no links again Maybe these pages are not notable, or links should be created if these pages are relevant. As we said, protected pages are pages uh, that may be controversial, usually pages about celebrities and politicians, or entries that have to do what with current events that have uh, some controversial nat nature and uh, they're, they're made, they're locked <coughs> permanently or semi-permanently, permanently. The same way that you have a list of long pages, you have also a list of short pages because clearly if a page only has 43 bytes, then it shouldn't be there. Either it could be expanded or should be eliminated.
right? 43 bytes means fewer than 43 characters because th those bytes include code. And this is one example, and already it's marked for deletion because instead of containing content, it contains a link. But there is no reason why the content should be a link. If anything, this should be a redirect, right? Whereby if you go to the page for hash, you're redirected to the proper entry, which is hash function. And this is the proper page. Wanted page are pages that one could create, right? So the community discusses the uh, importance of adding pages. This is kind of important because at this point is difficult to find a new page that would, not, would be included and not be deleted uh, shortly that one can create. And it's kind of a pride point for a Wikipedian to have been able to create, be the first creator of one or multiple pages. And you see some of them have been deleted because uh, they, they have been added already. Each page, such as the one about Sean Connery, includes in the background also basic information about this page, which is fine, right? Nothing much to it. What's more important is you can also find information on how to cite this page. And more importantly, from each page, you can go to Wikidata and see the information, the basic information in a page such as the biography of an actor offered in a structured form, in the database-like form. And the reason why this was introduced and how this is used is that, as I mentioned, there are almost 300 language versions of Wikipedia. If any of those language versions does not include an article on Sean Connery in their respective languages, then all the basic data is here. And starting from here, a human or even a bot can create a new page in a different language, a new page on Sean Connery. And notice, again, that this is we are outside of Wikipedia proper, we are inside Wikidata, which is the repository of basic information in a different format. Right, and, and this is Wikimedia, where pictures and some basic media content is stored for that particular entry, which can also also will make it easy for others to include that in a new page. This is the wiki quote version of the page. So relevant quotes associated with the entry for Sean Connery. And of course, we were saying about the protection right after he died. He died in October, October 31st, 2020. You see from the lock how the page was closed. Uh, because they wanted to avoid people who took an interest in the actor to make too many changes to the page because of course uh, the news of his death was in the media they didn't want to make this controversial oh and by the way this is the Italian version of the uh, page right which is similar to the English version that's it for today.